Are you feeling stuck, lost, tired, or uninspired? We've all been there, including myself. I'm Coach Des, mindset motivator and lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm here to tell you that the best, unapologetic, and limitless version of yourself is yet to come. The Born Unbreakable podcast is here to inspire just that. With motivating guests from all different walks of life and around the world, their stories will empower you to unlock abundance and your unbreakable spirit. Do you need accountability? Reach out to me for a free consultation of how I can support you in reaching your maximum potential. This episode is brought to you by Korma Date Coffee, the healthy alternative to coffee. This delicious date coffee has the health benefits of giving you natural energy, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Best of all, Korma is caffeine-free. No jitters, no anxiety, and no afternoon crash. Go to KormaCafe.com, that's K-O-R-M-A-C-A-F-E.com, and enter discount code BORNUNBREAKABLE at checkout to get 10% off your order. Welcome to the Born Unbreakable podcast. I have Tracy Plush Court with me today. I've been so excited because poor Tracy had been waiting for our scheduling. It's been such a busy beginning of the year. I guess I want to probably start off with saying that. I know we're here at the end of February, but I swear it has felt like four months have gone. It's like double. So I don't know whether to feel good because I, I, I feel like time is going faster or to feel not good because there's, I don't know, just too, too much <laughs> going on. So I'm still, I'm still processing that, but I'm, I'm excited about today's, you know, topic because Tracy is the founder of a company called Self Made You, which is such a great alignment. I was just talking to her about that earlier to, to Born Unbreakable because we have this common objective of people being who they are and leaning into that that greatness and that strength and having confidence in it but it takes time it takes time to 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 build that and to feel good about your own personal branding and tracy does just that so i'll say a few more things and then i won't uh take up all the airtime here but tracy her focus is really helping men and women create their self-made wealth and wellness and i i love the i love both of those two things um and and also her coaching is it's broad but there's a couple of pretty tough things and you know i think overeating over drinking things like time management relationship changes career these are all areas that we get to and there can be some blockages there can be some barriers and i i would love to uncover today you know how we can walk away with some some tips and some mindset things that'll help us think through uh those types of areas and you know the interesting thing and we'll get into it tracy is that she went from being an advertising executive which has its own set of time commitments and challenges and demands to passionately pursuing something totally different in entrepreneurship and and starting her own coaching which is which is a magnificent journey all all on its own and today she helps people all over the country but um hopefully i covered a lot of good bases there <laughs> but tracy thank you for coming on today oh. on this beautiful day in minnesota for you right yeah, yeah it actually is beautiful we've got a lot of snow on the ground but it's bright and sunny which you know, if you're going to have a lot of snow, you, it, you're like really, really grateful if the sun happens to come out too. So yeah, it's beautiful here today. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's still technically winter, so it's tricky. Oh yeah. Uh, still got I was, a lot of winter. <laughs> a lot of winter. I was telling Tracy, I was in Memphis, Tennessee last week. And uh, I mean, that was interesting because the day before I came, it was 25 degrees. Then when I got there, it was 65 degrees. So it was great. But then, you know, then there was weather things and I left right before a storm came. So uh, the, yeah, it had its own special situations going on there. So all over the country, mm -hmm. we're, we're dealing with uh, adapting to 
um, not just the weather, but still the pandemic and all kinds of other fun things. But, you know, I'm still just intrigued by this thought about you going from all these years in the corporate advertising space mm -hmm. and <laughs> moving in this direction. Yeah. Tell, tell me more about that whole yeah. journey. Yeah, I would love to. So I spent almost 20 years in the advertising industry and my role was um, the operations of the agency. So we were owned by a holding company out in New York, um, one of the biggest, if not the biggest holding company. And um, I had the very unique privilege of kind of um, molding the culture of our agency. And I got to have a say in who we brought in, who our talent was. I even got an opportunity to work with the clients and, and help the clients understand our culture. Um, so my position was very unique. I got uh, a lot of opportunities to mentor some of the, the you know, talent that came through our doors. And I quickly realized as much as I love business, as, as much as I love the sexy world of marketing and advertising, what I really loved the most was having an influence on people's lives and really getting a chance to understand who they were and, and how I could best support them. And we did that as an agency, which was so incredibly unique. I don't think you find a lot of, you know, service based businesses, um, practicing like that corporate and social responsibility by like, you know, uh, diving in and like really supporting their, their talent. It's usually here's who we are and this is what we stand for. And now you need to mold to become one of us. And we did almost the exact opposite. And we actually got recognized on at a national level for our corporate and social responsibility um, tactics or um, techniques. And that that was a big part of my job. So I, I guess all that to say is it afforded me this opportunity to really see my strength and what it was that I loved doing the most. So making the decision to leave that industry was not easy, um, but it felt necessary. My kids were, um, entering into high school. So I kind of had this light at the end of the tunnel. I saw within, you know, three to four years, they would be leaving for college. They'd be leaving the nest. And I had spent the majority of their young lives, you know, working outside of the home with a really long commute and really long hours. And um, I just came to the decision that there was a bigger calling out there for me. And so, you know, I kind of left at the height of my career at, at the point where I would say, I loved it the most and I wanted to very intentionally leave at that point when I really, really loved it, when I was really at my happiest. And, you know, and it's really afforded me opportunities like today where I get to come on here and talk about like how many people get the opportunity to live two major careers and love them so like intensely. Like I, I used to say when I would, you know, welcome all of the talent coming through our doors, I literally have the best job in the entire, <laughs> in the entire agency. And I kept, I would always joke and say, you know, hopefully a bus doesn't turn, you know, turn the corner and hit me. And, <laughs> or maybe somebody, you know, comes after me because they want the job and I wouldn't blame them. But I used to say that all the time. And now here I am. You fast forward, you know, five, six, seven years. And here I am saying the exact same thing about the the role that I've created for myself within self made you. So, um, but it's truly, it's because you get to serve people at a level that is just so rewarding. You get to have an influence on people's lives and, um, you know, not only their lives, then they go out and they take what they've learned and they influence lives around them. And so it's very exponential in the results and it's, there's just nothing like it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I love something that you said because it is unique to what people might may commonly think, which is this. You're in corporate America and oftentimes the shift 
or the change is because it's too taxing, it's too demanding, it's too hard, there's something in it, it's just not right, and, and then you do something else. You loved what you were doing. There was passion and charisma and enthusiasm in that, but you took the best part of it, and it was still hard, like you said, to leave, but you took the part that you enjoyed the most and now can focus on that uh, fully than, you know, before there was, you know, probably other things in addition to the people part that you um, were doing before. So I, I, I just love that acknowledgement that it's change doesn't happen because something has to be miserable or painful, although that's a, a very common reason why it does. It just, it could also mean opportunistic yeah. that there's just something calling your name that. Yeah. And, you know, I would say it has a lot to do with how do you choose? And this is really the crux of everything I teach at Self Make You. But, you know, how do you choose to think about the circumstance? So I could have chosen to think, wow, long, grueling hours, and my kids are getting ready to leave the nest, and I just can't take this any longer and quit, right? Mm -hmm. But instead, I decided I'm going to choose to focus on everything I love about this and leave kind of at that pinnacle point so mm -hmm. that I take th that kind of thinking along with me into the next role. Because if I choose to take the, you know, the negative thinking, the unwanted feelings with me to the next role, guess what experience I'm going to have in the next role, right? And so I very intentionally decided, and I would say that this goes for any sort of relationship, whether it's the relationship you have, you know, with your business or professionally or with your mate, you know, if you aren't happy at the time that the relationship is complete, that's your job is to find happiness within it so that in the next relationship, you bring along the managed thinking, the managed emotions. So you're not just repeating the experience. And so that's something that, um, we talk a lot about at self made you regardless of what the you know what the results are that people are trying to create like you said there's a you know there's a wide buffet of results yeah. that people can create at self made you and it doesn't really matter we apply the same framework to achieving those results and that's what we really focus on is understanding yourself on a mental emotional level first, like understanding how you're thinking and how that's getting your results, understanding how you're feeling and how that's driving your behavior. That's mm -hmm. huge. Like having the education or the curriculum of you is huge because then you can see exactly why you've created what you are experiencing. And once you understand that, then you can kind of reverse architect and create anything you want because you now have that understanding of how it worked you know, in an unintentional way. And now being intentional, you can reverse architect it and create whatever you want. So it doesn't matter if somebody wants to stop over drinking or somebody wants to create, you know, a multi-million dollar business, doesn't matter. It's the same exact format. So yeah, it's your own roadmap yeah. To, yeah. to getting, to getting closer to what you want. And I do find it so fascinating because the, the more time I spend in the self-development space, the more I see within myself, but also within my clients and, and people who are collaborators in this, how much it pays dividends when the investment that you make is in learning about you. Yeah, We spend a lot of time learning about others, contributing yeah. to others, pouring into others. But I think, you know, the best utility of your essence and your being comes when you've studied and continue to, because I don't think that there's a stopping point personally, um, to, to get this right, this mm -hmm. meaning yourself. Yeah. So that's, um, and it sounds like that is such a core focus. Um, and, and I am curious, you know, I, I think as a coach and, and this is just a journey that coaches go through too, is what, what kinds of things you focus on. So I know wealth and wellness mm -hmm. are things for you that, are some dominant spaces. How did that yeah. come about? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting story because when I left advertising, one thing that I quickly recognized as I answered the question for all of the inquiry minds of 
why, why did you leave? <laughs> so I got that story down pat because I must have, you know, answered that question no less than a thousand times. And I often would just say, you know, I feel like I'm being called for more. And I also really want to spend these last few years with my kids in a different sort of way, not in the just getting home at 630 at night and, you know, getting through dinner and dropping face down into bed only to get up super, super early and do it all over again. It's like, I wanted to have a different relationship with them. So I decided that, you know what, I'm really good at creating cultures and I love business and I'm going to come home and figure out how I can create some sort of consultancy coaching business that's centered on women who want to do the same thing, women who have that professional skill set and they want to transition out of corporate, but they have no idea how to do that. And the more I answered that question, it became very clear to me because you'd start seeing the heads nod and they're like, yeah, oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. You know, they hadn't even art articulated it for themselves because they didn't think it was possible. Yeah. And so I created kind of a framework and I will say, to be very honest, I was very focused on like, the strategy, all the actions, like first you have to know what it is that you're good at. You know, you got to know your skills and you got to know, you know, who your you know ideal client is. Like I, I was all about the action steps and it wasn't until I decided, I, mean, I decided I wanted to go get a life coaching certification because I knew that there were particular, you know, skill set and some techniques that would help that practice. And yeah. so I, went and pursued that through the life coach school. And I was also not only certified as a life coach, but also as a weight loss coach. And in my little peanut brain, I thought, okay, this will be perfect. I'm going to take the life coaching skills and apply it to the coaching practice that I was already, you know, that I already had in play for these women who wanted to create purpose-driven businesses. And I'm going to take the weight loss skills and apply it to my own life because I had about 40 pounds that I wanted to lose. So the person who was doing a lot of my social media decided she was going to document the weight loss journey. She took tons of pictures of me and those pictures, of course, my audience was watching me lose the weight and that became more of a topic of conversation. So as I'm sitting here coaching these women who wanted to start purpose-driven businesses, the world is starting to see my transformation from a weight loss standpoint happen. And it was like, I never in a million years, never in a million years would have thought I would be coaching primarily people how to lose weight. Um, but it's really where my calling has led. And um, I am kind of a data person. I love science. Um, and I, I'm not, I'm not dumb. I do know that everybody, when they come to a coach, they want to know the A's, like they want to know the actions, right? You can help them with the mindset, but I think human nature is just tell me how to do it. Just give me that, you know, silver you know. bullet, right? Give so, me the silver bullet. Give me yeah. the little magic yellow pill. Yeah. Just make it fast, make it yeah. quick, make yeah. it easy. <laughs> so I developed, it's my program is called Self-Made Mind and Body. And it's, I, I will underscore the mind. It's always every, every result you want to create is always going to start at the level of your mind. But the body component cannot be overlooked. And so the it is a mental, emotional transformation along with a physical. And then mm -hmm. I will say the, the final component that we've added in that has really like been the final punch has been the metabolic component. And so, uh, so it's so amazing that you just that you just said that because one of the questions and I might be getting ahead of myself because there's so much that you've just said, but because you said metabolic, I have to ask you, you know, we talk about being mentally fit. And I think that resonates with people because there's there's a lot of different ways that we talk about mindset. Um, and it's a it's a pretty widespread topic. Yeah. What does it mean to be metabolically fit. Yeah. So your body, I, mean, I think a lot of people hear the word metabolism and they think that that equates to how fast or how slow they lose weight, right? Well, I that's why people say, oh, right. well, you're young. You have a good metabolism. Right. That's the reason you can, you know, eat five pounds of nachos and be fine every day, right. that kind of right. thing, right? But the reality is, is your metabolism is the effectiveness of 
it it it's the the unit or the system that's in play of creating energy. So you're either creating your energy through the sugar that you're consuming, or you're going to create energy from the fat that is stored on your body. So if you want to lose weight, it's really important that you laser focus on the fat that is stored on your body as the source of energy and not the food that you're consuming, which is typically it's turned into glycogen through the sugars and the starches and the carbs that we eat. And, you know, the I would say the average American diet is high carbs, high sugar, high starch, starchy vegetables. And so it's often <laughs> it's often turned into glycogen. And that is what we are using as our form of energy, which never gives our body the ability to tap into the fat stores. So from a metabolic right. standpoint, you want to make sure that you are metabolically fit, that your body has the ability to be a sugar burner. Check. Most of us have that ability, but you also want to make sure you want to make sure that it has the ability to be a fat burner. And I would say that's a very, very low percentage of the of the American population. And so there's certain things that you have to do to become a fat burner, to become metabolically fit means you can actually burn both sources of energy. That's what that means. And there's certain practices that have to be put into place. And you've got to understand, I'm all about the data. We make decisions based on data, not drama. That's another concept that we talk about. <laughs> That's so true. Well, <laughs> and so maybe, I teach maybe we want to get to that. Although I think today with reality TV and everything else, there's a lot of people making oh, decisions off of drama, not data. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So if you're looking to lose weight, it's the decision to lose weight is probably based on the dramatic thoughts that you're having when you look in the mirror, right? Or oh. when you put on your pair of jeans, well, yeah, right? because if you're anybody, and it, this could be a man or a woman, by the way, um, you know, you're, you're trying to, well, and here's another thing that I know people do. As you age, you remember what you looked like at your best time when at your high school prom or something, right. and you see, you know, things have changed, and you're looking in the mirror going like, ugh. I was that, and now it's this. Like, how do you get back to that? And and that's, uh, uh, I think, something that happens often. Besides all the comparison that you could be doing to all these other people, which is of no utility, I think it right. just makes you feel bad. Um, it that that's a thing. Is like, well, how how can I get back to that place where I was in my best shape and and that kind of thing? So if somebody if somebody is having that issue and they want to be better on the fat burning side like what is one thing what's one thing that that helps with that and and is it easy to sustain definitely yeah i would say what makes it easy to sustain is monitoring your results or aka collecting data is what we call it <clears throat> so if you, if i was just to give your listeners one way to yeah. start down the path of becoming metabolically healthy, metabolically fit, I would say cut out the sugar. And if that scares you, I would say cut out the sugar and find alternatives. It doesn't have to be deprivation. It doesn't have to be restriction. It's a matter of finding what works for you in lieu of the sugar. If you are somebody who has a sweet tooth, I have a sweet tooth. I love sweets. So I've just, I understand the science behind what sugar does. It's a toxin for our human body. It, there is absolutely no the benefit devil. from it whatsoever. All of that. What are they <laughs> doing? Yes. Oh. So finding the alternatives <laughs> will behoove you, right? So you don't feel deprived. And so that you feel like you're in control. You don't feel victim. Um, and if you're coming in and you're feeling like you have, you're filled with thoughts that, you know, I used to be this size and I want to be this size again, or my worthiness is on the line because I'm, you know, 10 pounds overweight. All of that is a huge signal to me as your coach that where we have to start is at the level of your mind, because those thoughts are not serving you. 
if those thoughts are making you feel defeated before you even get started, let's <sighs> let's just talk real honestly about how you're going to show up. So we've got to, I've got to make sense of that. And at the exact same time that we're making sense of all of that, I'm actually, I've got you on a protocol and the protocol includes foods that are fueling you as well as extending the time in between your meals, which some people call fasting. Um, and that gets you on, down the path, started down the path of becoming metabolically fit. And once that happens, it's like brain fog starts to lift, energy starts to rise, your mood starts to stabilize, like all of these things start to magically happen and they totally support the way of thinking different. Like it just, it all goes hand in hand. And so to me, it just underscores the fact that you can lose weight and go after that physical transformation. I would be willing to bet my life that that works for a very small, like, percentage of the people that, you know, enter into the weight loss efforts. It And if it does work, it's not sustainable because you're only transforming on one of the four levels. You're transforming on a physical level. That is not enough. Just like what I said with me leaving corporate, the corporate world and, and entering into coaching, if I would have left unhappy, guess what I, what I would have brought forward into the next role? I would have been unhappy because I would have been thinking the exact same way. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes for weight loss. We are going to help you understand how to think different mm -hmm. about where you're at right now, what's possible for you, and, and find out what actually serves you. So then at the exact same time, you're eating in a way that supports like more energy, higher level of thinking, clearer thinking. So it's transforming on a mental, emotional, metabolic, and then physical. And I'll just say that every other weight loss program out there, they focus on the one, they focus on the physical transformation. And well, I have a look at the biggest loser. Look at these, the, the yeah. shows that they, you know, every week, 10 more pounds, this many more pounds. And the next thing you know, a hundred pounds. And then there's the stories that you hear about, not so much in the present, you know, and the show it's the after of like gaining the weight back and the, you know, depression and, and all of these things, because it's so extreme. Right. Right. Focus on this really big thing, but yeah. it's not hitting on all the cylinders. Right. Yeah. So, you know, even, we get a lot of men in our program um, that they they come in with a much different why or a different reason why they want to lose weight than a lot of the women who come in. Mm -hmm. A lot of the women who come in are they are starting to recognize like kind of more of like the middle age symptoms where they're not sleeping as well or they're having the hot flashes. Um, you know, they're not able to lose weight as easily as once before. So it's a little bit more of kind of the midlife kind of pre-menopausal um, or even menopausal, some post-menopausal. But we also will get the men who they just want to think and feel differently. And they're like, you know, it'd be great to lose five or 10 pounds, but or build some muscle. But for them, they're recognizing life just doesn't seem quite right. And so the Self-Made Mind and Body program, it literally is for anyone of any age, of any you know gender, because it's teaching you how to transform mentally, emotionally, physically, and metabolically. And these men who don't even want to lose weight, but they want to build muscle, right. eating foods that fuel you and extending the time in between those meals does nothing but help you feel more energetic and, and think more clearly. So like, there's no downside to, you know, joining a program that has a focus on the, you know, the holistic you versus mm -hmm. one component. Like if there are any other programs out there that offer that, I would highly recommend, you know, considering it because it's you transfer transforming on all levels. And why would you not like engage in that, you know, versus one thing at a time or only one thing? Like you want to be comprehensively 
happy, living optimally. And that's going right. to take a transformation on all those levels. So yeah. yeah, you asked me earlier, like, what are the things that we most focus on? And, you know, right now, self-made mind and body is, has more of a hook for weight loss. Yeah. But I, right now our campaign kind of focuses on what were the, what were the unexpected benefits that you got from the program? And we get over and over and over people blowing away like their professional goals or doubling, tripling their incomes. And it's because they've learned how to manage their mind. That's why. It's brilliant. It's, it's so amazing. And I, I, I love the comprehensiveness, you know, that you're talking about. Cause one of the things that I, I see that can be challenging is sustainment, sustainability, right? 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 People can't, it's kind of like the, the whole effect of the new year's resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll use that as an example since we're, we might still be on that high Mm -hmm. or we might be coming off of that high. Cause for a lot of folks, they get to the end of the year, they're like, what do I need to do better? My weight, my health management, my finances. And you're like really gung ho about it. You hire a coach or you do something. Cause you're like, I want to jumpstart this off. Right. I have somebody that's going to be with me for the first 30 days, maybe the first 45 days. And then after that, there's like could be a decline and perhaps a plateau. And I think when you're talking about being comprehensive, I'm thinking past the high that you just like in a new relationship. It's so great. We never fight. We're meant to be. We're going down the aisle, you know, like yeah. Yeah. years like, you know, years phase, later, yeah. you're like <laughs> I can't stand you. You know, I mean, it's there's there's just that period where everything seems right until it's time to have it as your daily routine. When you have the training wheels off, when you don't have the coach or the mentor anymore because you think you can do this on your own. Yeah. And then next thing you know, old habits die hard and and yeah. and here we are. I mean, because that's the really the goal, right? Yeah. Is people being able to carry on. Yeah. Unless it's some kind of scheme where you screw up, so you have to keep coming back, and then that's right. a way for someone to make money off of you or something. Right. I mean, right. but I, I would imagine that 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 really is the purpose of having a comprehensive uh, view. No on- doubt about it. Yeah. So you know, I think self-made you sometimes I think can get a little bit confusing. People get lost in the nuance. It's like, well, so you're going to teach me how to become self-made if I'm supposed to be self-made, aren't I supposed to do it myself? (laughs) And so what I teach people is how to self-coach. So I'm the coach that gives them the skill sets that on a day-to-day basis, they can learn how to coach themselves. And that starts Mm -hmm. with awareness. Number one, it's like, what is it that I'm feeling right now that's driving the behavior that's getting me this action of overeating or over drinking? What is it that I'm feeling right now that's driving the behavior of making me overeat or over drink? Okay. So that's step number one is the awareness. Mm. Step number two is recognizing that you actually have a choice. The way you're feeling is just happening by default because we've got this part of our brain. It's our primitive brain that's you know meant to keep us safe. And we react to the thinking of our primitive brain. And most people will live you know, 90%, maybe 100% of their life unaware that that's what they're living their life from. It's just these like false truths that their primitive brain is offering in the form of a thought that we think just because we're thinking it must be true. And so then we react from it, right? Like they're having a thought of, I want that. That looks good. I need that. And then they feel the urge and then they dive in, eat or drink that. And Mm -hmm. that, you know, rinse and repeat cycle creates an experience of them finding themselves overweight, right? So having the awareness of that's what's happening and then recognizing you actually have control over that. We're the only species that actually can watch our thinking and like step in and like alter it. Yeah. And so I give people the format to see it. They can just see it in black and white. This, this 
plus this plus this. I call it solving the mind math. This plus this plus, plus this is getting you your current result. Do you see that? And once they see it and they understand it and they make sense of it because it's them, they're seeing this is how they're creating their experience. Then we can kind of reverse architect it and decide intentionally what it is that they want to be feeling or what it is that they want to be doing or what it is that they want to be creating for, for themselves. And we just reverse architect it. And so it's first having the awareness, second, understanding that you have a choice. And then third, it's deciding, okay, I know this is what I want to create. And therefore, these are the steps that I need to be taking. And this is what I need to be generating in regards to a feeling. And if you want to generate that feeling and you want to create sustainability, then that means that you have to do the work to sustainably generate the feeling, sustainably practice that thought that creates that feeling. It's not like, okay, I've now been enlightened and now yeah. therefore I'm going to you know, overcome every single challenge and obstacle in my life. No, mm -hmm. it takes the work, but I'll tell you what, that work is so much easier than the suffering of oh. feeling victim to all the outside things. Right? Oh my gosh. I just, I just did an episode. It was the last episode that just came out and it was about having a victor mentality and having the choice between whether it's pain or suffering because pain is inevitable and yeah. suffering is a choice because you don't yeah. have to stay there. Exactly. And so, you know, I'm, I'm listening to you talk about some of these overindulgences that, that can occur, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Over drinking, overeating. Th those are two popular ones. Overspending. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we could go on and on. <laughs> and there's a lot. There's yeah. a whole long list that we could get into here. Um, retail therapy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are, is it cause, because I think the awareness part, it's kind of like when I, when I see the show, you know, um, intervention or so, I don't know. I'm mean, that's kind of extreme, but there's usually awareness is something that can happen. I, I won't say easily, but people often know it's, it's a validation or a confirmation when they're going into a program, engaging with others, getting, starting to get resources to, to put, shed more light onto the, to the issue and how, perhaps how, uh, how much depth there is to it, especially yeah. if it's been a long period of time where, mm -hmm. where this has been a part of someone's life. It's been maybe years. Yeah. What are the kind of reinforcements that it takes to undo that? Because it is this subconscious thing when all of a sudden you're just like, well, I just eat like, yeah, it's just what I do. You know, it's who I am. It's, and yeah. it's, it's this thing that it's, it's who you are. So <clears throat> I'd imagine that there are some things that you have to put in place yeah. because when you do have those triggers, there's a gut check there to go, okay, I'm doing it again. Now, this is my point where I'm, where this is the choice part. Yeah. And I'm going to be conscientious about doing this other path instead of my primitive path. Like right. what, what, what kind of reinforcements? Yeah. So, are needed? you know, I, I would say first off, we teach really simple frameworks, you know, so like, um, because I am such a visual person, I tell my clients that in order to make sustainable, holistic change. You have to know yourself, S-E-L-F. So S is solving the mind math. You've got to know what it is that you're thinking that's generating the feeling that's creating the experience that you're having, okay? So you got to know how to solve the mind math. That's the S. The E is eating foods that fuel you. And the Foods that fuel you will look entirely different than the foods that fuel me. So we take the little bit of time that it that's necessary to understand what does that look like. And I give clients guidelines on that for kind of a trial and error just so we can quickly come to that conclusion. The L is learning how to collect data so that we can make decisions from data, not drama. Okay. So what does that do? We're collecting data 
every single day to give ourselves, to give our brain evidence that this is working because the numbers don't lie, right? We can look at drama all darn day and it's not going to get us anywhere. But you look at data, you can look at the like science-based evidence and there's your truth. Now you know it's working. So we teach our clients how to collect the data so that they have the evidence to keep going with this very simple framework. And then the F is fasting, not to restrict, but to balance out your insulin so that you cognitively perform better so that you become a fat burner. Your brain actually prefers to use fat as a source of energy versus sugar. But most people don't know that because we all live on a high sugar, high carb mm -hmm. diet. But so that framework, S-E-L-F, my clients are constantly running that through their head, you know, so it's like they can kind of keep checking themselves. Is there a piece of this that I'm not missing or that I might not be having in play or that I am missing? Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, giving people an easy way of navigating to the result that they want and, uh, you know, keep reminding them that this is well within your control. The reason why you haven't been able to get the results that you're looking for is because you've been trying to unlock that door with old keys, old <sighs> thinking, right? Old practices. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the new key to unlock the new door and it's totally different and you have to be open to that. It's a totally different way of going about it, getting whatever result that you want. So um, I think that's the value of having a coach, to be quite honest. You know, you've got yeah. that in our program, you get a mentor, you get an advisor, and then you get a coach. And, you know, it it takes that team, you know, to come alongside of you to put this new practice into, into play. But um, having those reminders, I think, is is makes it much easier, much more enjoyable to get through that journey. But ultimately, the goal is that you master self coaching so that like at any given moment throughout the day, you're coaching yourself, you're asking yourself these high quality questions, and you're coming up with the answers and you're recognizing the difference between primitive brain and prodigy brain thinking and yeah. how powerful that is. Who doesn't want to be a prodigy? Totally. I mean, no. seriously, <laughs> like just those words, primitive, it's like such a turnoff now. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, but I, I, you know, I want to acknowledge because I, I, I recognize that there's people listening and, and we, there's all, there's all, we're all working on something. You know, it could, it could be weight that, you know, it could, it could be money. It could be something else, but it's, it isn't easy. It does take repetition. It does take commitment. And like you said, you do have to have an open mind. You know, if there, if there's anyone listening, any habit, new habit that we're trying to form, it requires us to be will, have a willingness. Cause I do believe we have the abilities as human beings. We are equipped with the ability to do different things. Yeah. The willingness, yeah. there's a difference between skill and will. And yeah. if you don't have the will, it's going to be very difficult for any kind of change to happen because there's right. not that commitment yeah. isn't there. Yeah. If you don't have that emotion of will, you know, if you're not willing, you got to ask yourself why, you know, why am I feeling unwilling? Is it, what's the thought? What's the truth? that you're buying into. Because whether it's right or wrong, I would just suggest it's not serving you. Mm -hmm. And that's where the conversation can end. And we can just say, okay, well, what would be a thought or a belief that is going to generate the will? Because that's what you're going after. So is mm -hmm. it, it's possible I could learn a new way of of creating this goal, of achieving this goal. Like, think about that, that thought, that simple little thought. It's, it's such a nuance, but it's possible that I could learn a new way of achieving my goals. Mm -hmm. Well, that, and think about the, well, the impact of the relationships around you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I've had a lot of, I've heard a lot of these stories of people who say, yeah, that one friend, let's just call her Karen, just to pick a name. 
Yeah, it's three years later. She's still talking about that same thing. She's talking about that same problem. She's, you know, and, and then you're known for that because yeah. you talk and you talk and you talk and you talk at nauseum about this thing that you want, but never attain. Right. You know, but I don't know that anybody wants to be that. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I mean, it, because it's a, it affects, it affects you because that's the most important person that we're trying to take care of here, but yeah. it does affect the environment around you and yeah. how you're perceived, the energy you put out there into the world, whether you're putting positive of, of uplifting energy or energy that's draining and, mm -hmm. you know, bring, bringing, bringing the vibe down. Yeah. We have the ability to do that. Yeah. Walking into a room. Right. Yeah. Well, and Karen, if, she's she's giving she's getting some sort of payout on you know what it is that she's doing it might just be some sort of comfortable experience because that's all she knows right she doesn't know any better so she's just going to keep going back to that even though we would argue it's so uncomfortable to be on the receiving end of it karen gets the payout of being in this very comfortable type environment that she creates for herself and yeah. then I would say from our perspective of having to listen to Karen, we just need to be reminded we have a choice. We have a choice in what we're going to think about Karen. We have a choice in what we're going to feel about Karen. We have a choice of whether we're going to sit here and listen to Karen, right? And I'm then that Karen. puts all of the <laughs> power back in our court. It sucks when we think that Karen is pushing her thoughts feelings and actions onto us and we have no control. So I think, you know, from two vantage points, that's a, that's a experience that we can kind of look at and from a different perspective and, mm -hmm. and recognize, you know, Karen's doing the best she can. She doesn't know any better. Yeah. She hasn't been enlightened like we have. <laughs> that's right. And if your name's Karen, there's literally no <laughs> indictment towards you that just no. came out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> You know, so I do want to ask, because this, this is pretty cool. It's exciting. I, I think that there's people who want that kickstart, want that jumpstart, just need, they ha they do have the will. They just don't yeah. have the tools. Yeah. You have a program yeah. that's coming up in April. Yep. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So April 11th through the 15th, we are um, jumping back into our kickstart. And so this is really for those people who want to understand that framework that I talked about, the SELF. And we've had countless people go through this very same program, totally free, who have come back and told us it made all the sense in the world. I applied what I learned and I lost 30, 40, 50 pounds. We've heard it over and over again, because it's the new key they've started using a new key to unlock that new door. And you can get that from this free program. We have a lot of people who want to go further and have more of a handheld approach and have the coach and have the mentor and have the advisor. And we've got options for them. But for five days, we have a 30 minute program running April 11th through the 15th that takes you through exactly what we teach the top line of it all. And you can absolutely do it by yourself. And we also have the option of coming alongside of you. So I would highly recommend um, if you've got the time, it's it's done in our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called the Student Union and um, it's live and it's recorded. So if you come live, you can ask questions. And if you can't make it live, it's recorded and you can watch it at your convenience. So if you go to selfmadeyou.com, www.selfmadeyou.com, um, you can sign up for that. You can get your workbook right now and just start perusing that and be ready. So we'd love to have you. Free. I mean, oh, I was, I'm back on that. I heard the word free <laughs> and I'm the kind of person that likes getting a free chapstick, getting a free tote bag. Anything, free anything. Up in the air, you're about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I have way too many of the things that just because there's, I'm just that person that psychologically, there's like yeah. this little hit that happens. Yeah. So, My you best know, friend I, is the exact same way. We always yeah. we tease her because you go to any sort of festival and we're like, yeah. oh God, if anything gets thrown up in the air, she's going to like trample anybody because she wants the freebie. <laughs> right. It's not my size, but I know somebody that can have this t-shirt, you know? It, right. Yeah. But here's the thing. I, I think that 
we're in a day and age and at in a time when we have an abundance of resources at our finger. I mean, this podcast is free. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's just so many things that we don't, it's almost like a crime that we don't take advantage of things yeah. that are at our fingertips. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. it's so much more than ever before. That's what's the beauty of it. Yeah. And, and there's not even a, sometimes I think an appreciation, yeah. you know, for that. So if, if this means that, that you're listening and it, and it, and it, and it is a, the beginning of a journey for you, I would encourage it. If it is a, a restart of a program for you. Because like I said, that there, there's that loop that sometimes we know what to do. We've done it before. It's like, I've, re I've rode a bike or I've gone skiing, but you know, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. I'm a little rusty. I, I, I need to just, you know, kind of sharpen my saw yeah. kind of thing. It's, it's so, it's so worth it to be able to, to realize like, Hey, I really can do this on my own or I could benefit from just a little bit more to help me get to where I want to go faster. Yeah. Yeah. That's the perfect, That's the perfect awesome. um, description of the people who typically attend the kickstart. It's like, it's either the people who are totally open to new concepts or it's people who know they've tried it all and they know what doesn't work. And they're like just looking for another option and they happen to stumble on the option. It's the last option that they yeah. will ever have to, you know, put into play. Um, people who actually already buy in to the metabolic health, the mental health, the emotional health, and maybe they even know a lot about metabolic health, but they want to come and fine tune it. Um, my doctor just finished our program. My own personal doctor went through our Your body doctor, program. the person yep. with the degree, the person yep. who went to school and studied and did the things. Yep. She went, went through, through the program. program. I, I actually interviewed her on my podcast. So it's, it's a fascinating story because I, it, it baffles me that we consistently, every time we start a new round, how many healthcare professionals we have in our program. So I think that that's a testament to, you know, there's a lot of specialists in each and every category, but you rarely have an opportunity to bring all of those areas together for a total yes. transformation, you know? So, um, but the, my doctor had said, you know, I wanted to experience this so I can refer your program to the countless people better on a day-to-day -day basis. And she yeah. kept saying, you know, she said, what makes it hard is the fact that it's free. She said, people devalue things that are free. And she's like, I really think that this should be like a $98 offer. She has said that to me multiple times. At this point in time, we want to make it widely available because we know it's a new concept. And yeah. we just want people to, we just want it to be available. And if you can get what you need from that, great. And if you want more of a handheld approach, we have that offer for you too. But that's your decision to make after you've went through the five days. And um, so if that mean if that's meaningful to anybody, uh, yeah, yeah, my own doctor went through the that's program. A, that's a testament. That, yeah. I mean, and, and she lost 20, 25 pounds, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And, and, and I do think, you know, cause regardless if, you know, if, if losing weight is a goal, I think that's great. Absolutely. It's something to consider, but I think even the understanding Mm -hmm. That's what I'm intrigued, you know, that's what I'm personally intrigued by. Yeah. If anybody is just wanting to be metabolically f fit, and especially as we, we go through life and our bodies change and things yeah. are kind of, you aging. know, yeah. aging and not moving as quickly here. I mean, those are, those are the kinds of things that you start paying attention more right. when you, right. when you realize that you aren't just superhuman and everything just stays the same and, right, all, and right. all of that. So, so right. I absolutely think that's worth it. And, um, I, I think it's really neat that you, that you put that education out there because I don't think, um, there's a whole lot of it. And if there is anything, especially with diets, it's, it's, a, it's an, it's a territory that people are weary about because mm -hmm. there's a lot of gimmicks and there's yeah. a lot of like, Oh, you'll just lose weight within days. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's so extreme. It feels inauthentic. Right. Some of these right. things that, you know, you right. see, you see like a, like an infomercial or yeah. some sort of ad and it just, it, it's, 
suspect, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so I, I, I love that you're just very honest that it does take all of these things yep. for you to get to this place. But if you're committed, you're commit committed to it, you, you absolutely can because right. many people have, and you know, there's proof in that. Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure that I have some time here to ask you a few questions just about you. Cause it's just fun to do. I'm ready. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but you know, I had, I shared with you when we were talking a little bit one-on-one about my show being called Born Unbreakable. Mm -hmm. And I love your story personally of, of being able to, to pivot and do something different. Um, and, and we all go through hard times, mm -hmm. right? What for you has been the experience or recognition that, that you are unbreakable? Ooh. Um, honestly, I, I really struggled not only with overeating and being overweight for the majority of my young life. Mm -hmm. Um, as I got older and after I had children, I experienced what over drinking did to my life. And it was a battle like no other. And I tried to go after that and tried to solve that problem, like white knuckling my way through it. And I had to, I had to attack it because nothing else worked. I stopped drinking for a year at one point and like in the blink of an eye, you know, thinking I could be moderate I had a drink, which then overnight led to over drinking once again. And then I quit for a handful of months and then fell right back into over drinking. And, you know, um, I was already coaching at that time and my ego got the best of me, you know, telling, I was telling myself that, you know, the truth is, is I'm better than this and I don't really have a problem. And I know how if at, at any given moment I could solve the problem. And that was an ego driven lie. And it made me realize that, you know what? I am no special unicorn here. It doesn't matter how much education I have. I am a human being who has a part of my brain that is going to, if left unmanaged, it will send me down very reactive paths. And so, you know, I had to pull myself out of that and really get honest with myself, look at the results I was creating by having that mismanaged or unmanaged mind and go after it again in the way that I know that works. So yeah, I don't, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm unbreakable from an egotistical standpoint. I would say probably to your credit, born unbreakable is more of a purpose driven identity. It's not mm -hmm. a ego centric identity. So mm -hmm. it's in the same way that I use self-made, you know, I, I teach people how to be self-made and that is purpose driven. That is, Every one of us has our flaws. Every one of us has our challenges. And in spite of those flaws, in spite of those challenges, we decide who we are. I decided yeah. that I am somebody who will absolutely be in control. I will take responsibility for the unintentional and the intentional results, period. That's what being self-made means. And I would say that that probably defines being unbreakable as well. Absolutely. Oh man, that is, that is awesome. I love that so much. Um, what about your bucket list? What is something that's on your bucket list? Well, I am turning 50 in July and living here in Minnesota where we're kind of, you know, just across the border from Siberia. Sometimes it feels like, <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a lot of people who do, they call it snowbirding. So they leave the winter and they go to these warmer, you know, climates. And when I first started running my own business, I thought, man, I would love to run my business from a warmer place during the winter 
And if I could do that before I turn 50, that would be really cool. That would be a bucket list. And I am so thrilled and so proud and a little bit nervous to say that on Sunday, <laughs> I'm leaving for a 41-day trip to Siesta Key, Florida, where I will be working from the beach of Siesta Key, Florida. I will be officially a snowbird. And so, yeah, that was on my bucket list. So I guess I got to find something else now, but um, it hasn't happened yet. And I'm like knocking on wood that I <laughs> I can yeah. make a 30 hour <clears throat> drive that I have ahead of me and it'll, it'll all be worth it. I'm oh, so it's, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. And I, and I, and I love that you're doing something that, and you're talking about something that you're actually putting action to. And I think that's, what's, the, what's exciting about this is when we think about a bucket list or something that we dream about, it's, it seems far. And you're talking about something that you, that at one point was far, Fair. that has become near and now it's literally near like Hours. any second <laughs> you're you know you're gonna be getting in that car and making sure yeah. that you have everything you need to 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 go do that dream but um that's amazing and i think that's with the with the short time that we have here because that's pretty much all we know is that we have a limited time here yeah. is yeah. is to do do with that all the things that we want to do mm -hmm. and i love that you're doing that Definitely going to want to see some some pictures and yeah. want to hear about how that is. What about self-limiting belief? What's a self-limiting belief that you've had to overcome? You know, I would say anything that falls in the category of I should or I shouldn't have, <laughs> those are very limiting for me. And um my clients, we giggle all the time. I had a retreat last November and we talked about, you know, the shoulds. And I said, you guys, let's just stop the shitting all over ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> because essentially that's what we're doing. When you're saying I should have done this or I shouldn't have done that, it's you're just shitting all over yourself and it's so limiting and it doesn't serve you. And so, um, you know, it, it shows up in regrets it shows up in worry. It shows up in, you know, so many different emotions that just waste a whole heck of a lot of time. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's been something that I wouldn't say I'm, I'm far from perfect at it, but I catch myself and I don't stay there very long. And um, so recognizing it, having the awareness when it shows mm -hmm. up and really trying to pivot. Yeah. Pretty and not, not trying to, you know, feed myself a line of, you know, positive thinking. That's not it at all. It's what else could I choose to think that makes me feel different? That's the question I ask. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh my God, that's negative thinking. And I got to change that to positive. That's not it. It's just what else could I choose to think that's believable. That's going to make me feel different than this regret, than this worry. And so yeah, that's um, that's been huge. That unlocks a lot of doors for me. Oh yeah, that language that controls our th you know our thoughts, control our language, control our feelings, control our actions. Yep. That whole thing is very big. Yep. What about your superpower? What would you say is a superpower of yours? Um, probably planning. I love to plan. I am always like, I like to visualize. So I literally sat here this morning and like thought through the drive to Florida and what I'm going to do when I get to Florida. And like, when I come back from Florida, my son is graduating from college and I was thinking through that. And right after that, I turned 50 and we're going on a vacation for that. And it's like, I've got all of that completely planned out and I love doing that. So I would say, yeah, planning is probably my superpower. Yeah. People would need to call you up because some people, that is the last thing that they <laughs> yeah. think about or, or want to do. They're barely trying to figure out what's happening, you know, at 5 p.m., let alone tomorrow or the day after. So that right. that is actually really, really superpower. <laughs> Tracy, if you, if you had to give one last piece of advice to anybody listening, what would it be? You know, I think I would say recognize that you're human. Every one of us 
is a human being and we are born flawed. And so to have an expectation of perfection is not going to serve you. Recognize that you have a brain and part of that brain is meant to be keeping you safe. And it is constantly firing off on average 60,000 thoughts a day that you're reacting to and you're reacting to it unintentionally. So cut yourself a little bit of slack. Recognize that that's intentional. God gave you that part of your brain to keep you safe. But, you know, the reality is, is there's not a lot of danger around us. So that kind of thinking actually is not serving us. And so I want you to be aware that you also have the other side of your brain, your prefrontal cortex that makes decisions and you can manage that. But there's nothing broken about you. If you recognize that you're having those primitive brain thoughts, it's supposed to be there. If you didn't have those thoughts, something would then actually be wrong. And so cutting yourself some slack, um, I think would be my like parting advice because you are a human being. Yeah. yeah. We need to not be so hard on ourselves. Yeah. Oh, it's really yeah. true. Ugh. How can people find you? That's the most important thing because today was an appetizer, oh, you know, for, yeah. for getting introduced to a lot of really good things. And sometimes people, they need, they need a little more. Yeah. Just go to my <laughs> website, www.self, S-E-L-F, and then it has the little dash, M-A-D-E, and then the letter U. So selfmadeu.com. Um, on there, there's lots of different ways that you can work with us, including lots of free options. So mm -hmm. I have the Secrets of the Self-Made Podcast. I have the Student Union, which is the Facebook group, totally free. In within that Facebook group, we do the Kickstart, um, which we do that four times a year. So yeah. Yeah, we would love, 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 love to meet some of your listeners. And Des, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you too. So good. Yeah, this has been amazing. I'm like over here thinking about my metabolic health and all the things <laughs> I need to do to get that better. Um, I'm going to have to get on your, your yep, course. So I, can, I, yep. can, I can really uh, accelerate my competency in that area. But this is this has been really enlightening. So, so insightful. And I just again, I really appreciate the comprehensive way that you look at things. I don't think that we're we're one dimensional narrow thinking ever, you know, serves us for the long haul. You right. know, we end up having to come back around and figure out the other pieces to the puzzle. So um, you know, you've clearly put so much thought into way that, the way that you work with people, the way that you've developed your program. And I'm, I'm just grateful that we've had the chance to have the gift of you sharing that with people for the last hour. So thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. My you. pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Awesome. What amazing learning. Tracy Preshcourt. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I love the comprehensive approach mental emotional physical and metabolically fit i don't know about you but i got schooled on the metabolic element there's there's content out there about that I have been exposed to it. I do have friends who are health coaches. At one point I was a fitness coach, but it was much more focused on the, the fitness part of it with some of the nutrition elements. And I do think that learning about the metabolic aspect that influences our health, our well-being, our energy is, is such a critical part of uh, sustaining a healthy life and a healthy lifestyle. So. I cannot stress enough how much you need to check out this free kickstart program. It's free. There's what, what more do you need to say about it? So April 11th through the 15th, selfmadeyou.com. The information is in the show notes. Check it out, sign up, get the information, if nothing else to create the awareness. So even if you are going to go on a journey to do some work on your own, to improve your well-being, you can do that. And hey, 
if you want a little bit more, that option is available to you too. I hope you got a lot out of this episode. I definitely did. Wow. I am grateful. I am just still sitting here reeling about how much more, um, I want to learn. And, and that is the gift of, of self-development is there's always new things, always new areas for us to learn about in our life that can help to improve and expand the way we look at the world and the way that we walk in the world. So remember that you are your only limit. I know that you've learned some things today that you can take action on. I certainly hope that you do like signing up for this free kickstart thing. Um, but tune in, keep tuning in. There are incredible guests ahead. So don't forget two times a week, you get a dose of born and breakable podcast every Wednesday and Saturday. So join me next time. Share with a friend, like comment, subscribe. If you haven't already all that good stuff. Okay. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time on the Born and Breakable podcast.